بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین ان سورہ آراف دا سیونتھ سورہ آف دا قرآن ورسز فورٹی فور ٹو ففٹی ڈائلاگ بٹوین دا پیپل آف ہیل اینڈ دا پیپل آف ہیون از ایکچولی سائٹیڈ اینڈ آلسو فگرنگ ان دس ڈائلاگ آر پیپل ہو ووڈ بی اسٹینڈنگ ان ٹارٹس اور منرٹس ایریکٹیڈ اوور دا بیریئر وچ سیپریٹس ہیل فرام ہیون اینڈ دس ڈائلاگ ایکچولی Uh, is, as I said, recorded in these verses of Surah Araf. And it is generally believed that the people who would be sta- standing in the turrets or the minarets are people who would actually have equal number of good and bad deeds and hence their own, uh, affair, their own, their own uh, fate would, was, would be undecided as yet. And uh, therefore, it is something that uh, we have to uh, understand in this uh, context. Uh, Ustaz Amin Asin Islahi has interpreted uh, this, uh, this, verse, this set of verses in a different way and he has said that these people who are standing in the turrets or in the, the minarets are not people who have equal number of good or bad deeds. Uh, in fact, they are some very prominent people of this, uh, of the, of amongst, amongst mankind who will be made to observe heaven and the people of heaven and hell also will be made to, to uh, actually talk to them and have a dialogue with them. Uh, of course, he has offered his uh, reasoning and I, as I generally know, his reasoning is always based on linguistic and uh, the way language works. Uh, but before we actually see how he has uh, explained uh, this, Quranic, this set of Quranic verses, uh, let me read out this set of Quranic verses before you and also translate it. So as you can screen on this, see on the screen, uh, the verses are وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ أَنْ قَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدَنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّا فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّا The dwellers of paradise will call out and ask the dwellers of hell. We found that the promise God made with us was absolutely true. So did you also find the promise your Lord made with you to be true? قَالُوا نَعَمْ And they will reply, yes. فَأَزَّنَا مُؤَذِّنٌ بَيْنَهُمْ أَلْعَنَةُ اللَّهِ أَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ الَّذِينَ يَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَيَبْغُونَهَا عِوَجَا وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ كَافِرُونَ Then a caller will call out between them, The curse of God be on these unjust people, on those who stop people from the way of God, want to create divergence in it, and disbelieve in the hereafter. And then uh, the verse is gone. وَبَيْنَهُمَا حِجَابٌ وَعَلَى الْأَعْرَافِ رِجَالٌ يَعْرِفُونَ كُلًّا بِسِيمَاهُمْ There will be a curtain wall between these two groups and on the turrets of the wall there will be some people who will recognize each person through his sign. And you can see uh, viewers that the word araf uh, as you can see it is being pointed out this is the word which actually refers to the turrets, its singular is urf, and right after it is the word rijal, which of course refers to people. And uh, so it is said that uh, a wall will be erected between, uh, uh, between the people of hell and par- paradise, and on the, uh, the turrets or the minarets over that wall will be these people who would be standing in these turrets. And look what it says, rijalun yarifuna kullan bisima hum. So these people will recognize each person through his sign. And then, وَنَادَوْ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ لَمْ يَدْخُلُوهَا وَهُمْ يَتْمَعُونَ So uh, they will call out, you know, these uh, people of, who are standing in the turrets would call out to the people of paradise. What will they say? سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Peace be to you. And it says, لَمْ يَدْخُلُوهَا وَهُمْ يَتْمَعُونَ They will have yet to enter paradise but would be contenders. Of course, referring to the Ashab al-A'raf that they have yet to enter paradise. The people of Araf have not yet entered, entered paradise but will be its contenders. And then it says, وَإِذَا سُرِفَتْ أَبْصَارُهُمْ تِلْقَى أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ So when their sight will be turned to the dwellers of hell, they will instinctively say, Lord, do not make us the companions of, uh, of these unjust people. 
So, uh, before they were actually looking towards uh, the people of paradise and now their eyes will be turned towards the people of hell and instinctively they will say, God, do not, do not make us amongst these uh, people who are unjust. And then, وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ الْعَرَافِ رِجَالًا يَعْرِفُونَ بِسِيمَاهُمْ Earlier on, they were actually addressing the people of uh, hell and now they will be uh, addressing, uh, earlier on they, will, uh, they were of course uh, addressing the people who were in, in, the, in paradise, as, as the words are, salamun uh, alaikum. And now they will be actually addressing the people who would be in hell. So the words are, وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ الْعَرَافِ رِجَالٍ يَعْرِفُونَ بِسِيمَاهُمْ قَالُوا مَا أَغْنَ عَنْكُمْ جَمْعُكُمْ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَقْبِرُونَ Which means that, it's, uh, that after these, this, these people of the turrets will call some uh, people of hell, just leave out the word prominent because of the fact that it has been translated in a specific way. In fact, uh, let me just delete this so that it might not distract you. The word has been translated Keeping in view Islahi's translation, but for the purpose of uh, explanation, let me just uh, translate it the way people translate it, and we'll later come to this. So, after this, these people of the turrets will call some people of hell, so they would recognize through their signs. So, these people of the turrets will call some people of hell who would recognize, uh, they would recognize through their signs, and what will they say to them? They will say to them, the words are, are these not the people about whom you would repeatedly swear that these people cannot be worthy of any mercy from God? So basically to humiliate them, the people of Araf will address them and say that these people of uh, hell, they, will, they will, will be addressed and said that you would say about these people of paradise that they are not worthy of God's mercy and look, they are now here. Now it says, "Udkhul al Jannat ala khawfun alaykum wala antum tahzanun." Enter. Uh, so a, 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 a more precise translation would be that dwellers of paradise remain in this paradise. Of course, uh, uh, although we know that they have already entered para, uh, paradise, so the word "udkhul," as we shall explain later, does not here refer to the fact that they are made, they are being asked to enter paradise, but they are already in paradise, and there is this. Uh, style in the Quran in which a verb when used in this form actually refers to the fact that the person should remain uh, in whatever he has been made to enter. So, Udkhulu is, does not here may, uh, mean that enter paradise, it means remain in paradise. And as, as I said, we'll discuss its implications and a parallel verse uh, slightly later on. And then it says, La khawfun alaykum wa la antum tahzanun. There is no fear. There's no fear. Uh, so the words are, there is neither any fear for you, nor will you ever grieve. Seeing this, the dwellers of paradise, these companions of hell will say, what will they say? وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ أَفِيذُ عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَا أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهِ حَرَّمَهُ هُمَا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Pour down on us some of your water or grant us some sustenance which God has blessed you with. They will reply, God has forbidden both these things to the disbelievers. So, viewers, you can see that this is basically a dialogue not only between the people of hell and, and paradise, but also the people who are standing on the turrets, uh, on which, is, which of course these turrets and or these minarets are found on the walls, on the wall which separates hell uh, from heaven. So, the question, as I said earlier on, that we were discussing is that who exactly meant by the word Rajal, of course, which is translated here as uh, 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 the as people who are standing on the turrets. And as I said earlier on, most people and most uh, uh, Fasirun and exegetes say that this actually refers to people who have equal number of good and bad deeds and they are yet to enter uh, any place and they are actually awaiting for a judgment to be passed regarding their fate. Ustaz Amin Hassan Islai actually uh, critiques this explanation. He says that first of all, the word which is used is Rajal. Uh, remember, I had pointed out that word to you, Rajal means the way it is expressed here and the way it is used as an indefinite noun without an, the particle alif lam on it and, and with this uh, uh, plural form as well. Uh, it actually refers to some prominent people. 
the word when it is used in such a way it is called uh, an indefinite noun which actually is meant to express something grand it is like saying as uh, if you remember uh, in uh, Julius Caesar when Mark Antony was making a speech uh, and he was actually referring to Brutus one at one time when he ended the speech he said this was a man this is a man if I say this is a man or this was a man of course referring to the fact that this is a great man so in a very similar way Ustaz says that if these are the people who have equal number of good and bad deeds and at the same time the word Rajal is, ref is referring to some to a prominent person, to prominent people. So how can this word be appropriate to be used for people who have equal number of good or bad deeds? Of course, there should be prominent people who are extremely uh, high, in, uh, not only in their moral morals and in their conduct, but in their persons as well. So it is very inappropriate for this word Rijal to be used in this meaning in which it connotes that the people have equal number of good or bad deeds. The second point he makes is that uh, if it is to be, if it is to imply people who have equal number of good or bad deeds, then oops, different words should have been used here because the word Rajal, of course, only refers to men, and because of the fact that they could, they are, there would be several women who also have the same, uh, the same situation that they have equal number of good or bad deeds. So therefore, some other words should have been used here if the implication was that uh, these are people who have equal number of good or bad deeds some word which encompasses both men and women. The third uh, critique that he has presented, Ustaz Amin uh, Islai has presented is that uh, from nowhere is it evident that these are people who have equal number of good or bad deeds and of course the occasion of, of the text is that it should have been told uh, that what is the purpose of uh, this dialogue that is being taken place uh, between people of he hell and heaven uh, between uh, them and themselves and between the people of Araf. Of course, we don't, we don't get any clue again from here, whereas it was an occasion in which this, this something of this sort should have been told that if these are equal number of people who have equal number of good and bad deeds and uh, they are speaking to the people of hell or heaven, uh, then this is the occasion, this is the reason, but we find no such thing. And the fourth point uh, which he makes is that the that the discussion or the dialogue which these people, the people of Araf, the people who are standing in the turrets, the dialogue that they have with, with the people of hell and between the people of paradise is such which could only be a dialogue which is delivered by a person who is, who is in a superior person. For example, they are commending the people of uh, paradise by saying salamun alaikum and they are actually uh, humiliating the people of, uh, of hell by telling them that, uh, or by actually seeking refuge with the Almighty that uh, God don't make us like these people who are unjust. So it is very inappropriate for people who have equal number of deeds to speak in, that, in this manner with the people of hell as if they are much superior to them and with the people of heaven as if they are going to present them with, with, with a lot of congratulations. Uh, so he says that the, this is of course uh, very inappropriate. This of course is very appropriate if the word Rajal is correctly translated as prominent people. In other words, instead of translating this as people who have equal or implying that people here actually refers to people who have equal number of good and bad deeds, they are standing in the turrets and minarets. On the other hand, Ustaz says that this is actually the some of the prominent people found in mankind who will be made to stand in turrets uh, which, is, which of course would be on the walls between on the wall between hell and heaven and they will be made to see and have a dialogue between both these groups so that uh, this is of course a, a sign of great honor for them and uh, of course everything falls in its place if we view this explanation because especially the word Rajal, the word Rajal of course are referring to prominent people, prominent men and uh, some people who are prominent can only be, uh, it's, it's, it can only be translated thus if it is referred to such people and not to people who have uh, equal number of good or bad deeds. A problem which could have uh, occurred or which perhaps might have led uh, most of the Mufassirun and the exegetes to think that these people are, uh, have them equal number of good or bad deeds and then they are told that, uh, okay, enter paradise is perhaps the last word. Remember the last word was, uh, uh, the second last verse which in which uh, it was said, Udkhulu, 
and the words are uh, the exact words are uh the people of araf the people of the turrets are actually addressing the people of paradise who are of course in paradise and they are telling them enter into paradise so what does this mean they are already in paradise why are they being told by the people of the turrets that you enter in paradise they are already in paradise so here a very fine point which has been expressed by Ustaz Abin Aslai is that the word udkhulu does not always mean uh, that it is an imperative or it's a directive which tells people to enter but when it is used in in uh, in Arabic in certain uh, texts in, in certain on certain occasions it also means or refers to some constancy in that verb so when it says enter it actually refers to the fact that remain entered remain where you have entered and Ustaz Ibn Asin Islahi has actually presented a very, uh, very, very appropriate parallel of this usage of verbs in which when I mean, a verb is used, it's not always referring to its actual meaning. It actually is referring to a, another shade of its meaning. And here, in fact, it is saying this, uh, the fact that what it is telling us is that you have already entered there, so remain there. So Udkhulul Jannah would not mean that you are outside Jannah and you enter there and which, of course, uh, implying the fact that the Almighty's mercy actually got the better of him and he ultimately said, okay, you people uh, whose fate had been uh, not been decided and now my mercy uh, has got the better of me and I say, okay, enter paradise. This could have been the reason that people have uh, made this interpretation. But Ustaz says that the word udkhulu does not mean enter here. It means remain in the place that you have entered. And as I said, he has actually presented a very appropriate uh, a verse which uh, exactly tells us this and I'm going to present that uh, before you so that uh, it becomes uh, very evident that what he is saying is not something hypothetical. So look at this verse of Surah uh, Yusuf which is the 99th verse of the Surah. Uh, I'm going to translate it for you but just read the Arabic first. فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ يُوسُفَ آوَىٰ إِلَيْهِ أَبَوَيْهِ وَقَالَدْ خُلُوا مِسْرَ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ So uh, it's, you, we know that the Prophet Joseph, uh, this is the time when his parents had already entered and was in, their presence, was in his uh, presence, that it is said that when they entered uh, in Yusuf's presence, uh, he actually gave his parents a place uh, uh, besides him and said, Udkhulu Misra, insha'Allahu Aminin. Enter Egypt uh, uh, with God's will, with peace. Now, the, the point that he makes is that he, they had already entered uh, Egypt. Udkhulu, why is it said? Because they were in the presence of, uh, the, his parents were in the presence of, already in the presence of Joseph. And here it is it's being told that enter Misr or enter Egypt. So, he makes this point that the word udkhulu actually here refers to the fact that remain where you have entered with, with permanence so that it's a, it's a matter of honor for them. It's like telling them that wherever you have entered, you can remain there as long as you can with peace, uh, God willing. So you can see, uh, viewers, that basically the pitfall, uh, again, at times is the fact that a particular uh, Arabic word or a particular style is, uh, is not grasped the way it should be. So once again, uh, to recap, Ustaz Abin Asin Islahi, while explaining this uh, very important section of the Quran, has said that the word Rijal has to be seen as it is an indefinite noun. And when indefinite nouns are used in this way, they are actually meant to magnify something. So as I said, Rijal here would mean, mean peop, not people, but prominent people. And prominent people could only be those who are, of course, prominent with regard to their, to their deeds and they would be made to shown hell and heaven before entering their own destiny which is of course heaven but they will before entering hell and heaven they will be made to shown both uh, both these places and also be given the chance to actually address uh, both these uh, dwellers and the second important thing that you have to realize is that language of course is something which especially the Quranic uh, Arabic is something that a person must master if he has to interpret the Quran in its proper sense, the word udkhulu, uh, and this is the case with some uh, many other verbs as well, when used in such on such occasions and in such context, that it does not always imply the, uh, the its actual meaning. Uh, 
uh, it's, it's pure meaning, but it implies a shade of its meaning. And that shade is that you remain where you have entered. And he's given this example of uh, Surah Yusuf in which, of course, uh, the parents of Joseph are already in his presence. They were in, right in Egypt, but still it is being told to them, enter, miss, enter Egypt. They had already entered Egypt, not only entered, but they were right beside Joseph in Egypt. And he says that this is how verbs are also used. So I would advise you to pick up his tafsir, if possible, and go through it and read more details about it. And always keep in mind that the key to understanding the Quran is to be a very, very good connoisseur or a very competent authority on the language of the Quran so that we are able to reach its correct meaning. Akulukalihaza wastaqfirullah ali walakum walisar al Muslimina wal Muslimat.